Hi, let's look at the nerves of the posterior mediastinum. So within the posterior mediastinum, one of the first differentiations you're going to want to make is between the phrenic nerves and the vagus nerves. And this is an easy one if you remember the relationships at the root of the neck. The phrenic nerves are going to be much more lateral, both at the root of the neck as well as in the posterior mediastinum. The vagus nerves are going to be much more medial, and we can see the, uh, the vagus nerve coming down here, taking more of an anterior approach uh, on the esophagus. There's the left uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve. The, uh, the right vagus nerve is going to be obscured here by the right brachiocephalic and uh, superior vena cava. And we should be able to pick it up right about there. And it's going to make its way just posterior to the esophagus. We can also see <clears throat> the esophageal plexus, which predominantly consists of the anterior vagal trunk and the posterior vagal trunk, which is going to be obscured by the, uh, the distal esophagus there. It's also going to be joined by branches from the sympathetic trunk, so T4 through T6, as well as uh, branches from the cardiac and pulmonary plexuses. Um, <clears throat> we can see as well the diaphragm here and we can see the phrenic nerves innervating each hemidiaphragm and we can see where the esophagus would be transmitted through the diaphragm at the esophageal hiatus which is approximately at the t10 level Speaking of the sympathetic trunks, um, we can see the right sympathetic trunk here. This is lying paravertebrally, so <clears throat> it is just outside of the posterior mediastinum. This thoracic trunk consists of this stellate ganglion and then regular ganglia, each associated with the ventral primary rami of the thoracic nerve as we descend down through the thorax. We can um, see the stellate ganglion here, also known as the cervicothoracic ganglion, because it's where the inferior cervical ganglion coalesces with the first thoracic, or T1, ganglion. And then we have T2, T3, and so on and so forth. Each of these ganglia are going to communicate with the ventral primary rami of their respective spinal nerve, and we can see the rami communicantes here. And it's likely that this one is the white ramus communicans at that level. And this one is the gray ramus communicans because the white is more distal along the ventral primary ramus than the gray is. We also have the opportunity to see the greater thoracic splanchnic nerve. Uh, splanchnic nerves, as you recall, are preganglionic fibers that pass through the ganglia without synapsing. And the greater thoracic splanchnic nerve is going to consist of fibers from T5, T6, T7, T8. Uh, we're going to be below the diaphragm now. 9 and sometimes even T10. And that's going down to service predominantly the uh, celiac ganglia and plexus as well as branches to the aortic renal ganglion, as well as direct branches to the suprarenal or adrenal glands. So these are the nerves of the posterior mediastinum. Thank you very much for your time.